Okay, ladies and gents, we're about to get into SSI server side include drum roll. Okay, now before we go further, let's just save as version four. Now, again, this is just a good production technique, good habit to get into. This way, you can experiment with different ideas and different techniques, and this way, you have something to go back to. So, I do this quite a bit. I'm constantly doing save as version four. Now, my technique for saving things. And now this is for class purposes, so I'm just keeping it simple by going version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4. But in the real world, what I would do is I would keep the number the same and for aesthetic change. I would do something like 1A, 1B, 1C. So let's say a two-column site becomes a three-column site. Then I would probably change the number to 2, and then 2A, 2B, 2C, etc., etc. So it's just a good naming convention. Now, for real-world pract practical aspects here, if you're working on version 22D, well, somebody's not communicating, so you don't want to go that high. I typically give my, my clients, you know, two to three rough versions and then tune it from there. Okay, so let's understand what server-side include does, by the way. Okay, so let's say as an example, here's a good example of server-side include. We're going to do server-side include for our menu navigation, we're going to do server-side include for our logo or tagline, we're going to do server-side include for our or, or, or side tag, so let's actually change the side tag for a second here, let's scroll up, let's just double click this to collapse this, okay, so let's call this section, let's call this news, news events, now I'm keeping this whole process very, very simple. Okay, so technically this whole entire page can just be the parent, the parent page from my server side include. So it's a parent child relationship. So we can have basically a shell of a page that just includes other files. Therefore, if those other files are tied to 50, 60, 70 hundreds of pages, therefore I just need to change that one file and it will change all the subsequent pages. So it's a very cool technique here. So for practical aspects here, let's go down here to the footer and let's do something like this. Let's do option key G, which is the copyright symbol. Let's option key G, 2012, by site, dot com, you know, all rights reserved, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now let's understand something, right? Don't confuse server-side include with templates, although you could include server-side include with templates. Now, for those of you that are new to my videos, I have an entire series that's going to launch in about 10 days, about five days after the Adobe CS6 launch, which is supposed to happen sometime next week. But I really can't officially say I'm a beta tester for Adobe, but I can't give away that. They have to tell you that themselves. So I have a complete video series that I have on sale. If you go to thinklearnearn.com, you can be one of the first 200 people to sign up and get my new HTML5 CSS6 tutorials for Dreamweaver CS6. It's 18 months of videos for a flat fee, plus weekly updates and all the files to download. So enough with that uh, PSA there. Okay, so what I've done here is I want to change this, so let's understand something. Let's say I have the same footer information on hundreds of pages. I don't want to have to go to each page and change that, nor do I want to go to my template, because even with the template, guys, here's a problem. With the template, those files still need to be updated, which creates a bit of a problem. Okay, so how can we make, we're going to make this server-side include, we're going to make this kind over here, server-side include, we're going to make this server side include, and we're going to make this server side include. Now, technically, again, you can make this whole entire page just a shell container for my server side include. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, very simply. All right. So first of all, let's just take let's take this page and save it as version four SSI. Now, SSI, of course, is not not important, it's not necessary, but I'm just doing that to understand that this is going to be an SSI server-side include page, that it's basically, this is the parent page, the server-side include page, they're going to be the child page, so it's a child, it's a child 
parent relationship. Now, here's how I do this. I'm going to take this content. Okay. I'm going to cut it. Man X cut. I'm going to make a brand new document from scratch. New file. New file. It has no CSS rules. Very important to understand this. I don't put CSS rules in my server side so include. Although you can, I choose not to do it that way. So watch how I build this page. Okay. The only thing I want in this page, in fact, I don't want any of this structure at all. I'm going to delete all this structure. I'm simply going to come right here and paste my content. That's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to call that branding. P-R-A-N-T-I-N-G. Because that's the branding section of my site. Now, very important step here. This, this content has been tagged. What do I mean by that? Well, this is an H1 tag. This is an H2 tag. So the content has been tagged. Okay? But it's, it's marked up. It has markup. Okay? And that's all it has. We can get rid of this extra space that we don't need. Now, for some reason, it didn't, it didn't bring in the age group, so we can do that very simply by selecting this, hitting Command-T, and typing in age group. Probably didn't select the tag correctly when I did this, but I'm just sharing with you how I can fix this. So server-side include is going to contain the markup. It's not going to contain, it's not going to contain the HTML, I'm sorry, the CSS. I just want to be extremely clear about that. Now, this is going to have to be on the server, by the way. So you're going to have to upload that to your server. All included pages need to be on the server. Okay, so how do we put this here? Well, I just put my cursor where I want the content to be. I go up to the insert menu and insert server side include. So again, very clear about this. I put my cursor where I want the content to go. I go up to the insert menu, insert server side include, navigate your way to that file. Now, if this helps you, what I typically do here is I would just, rather than just call this branding, I might call this branding underscore CH for child or underscore SSI, if that makes sense to you. This way you know that that's going to be an inclusive file, an included file. I'm going to double click this file and it's going to take the content and it's going to put it right there. Okay. So that's a server side include. Okay, now important step here. Okay, if you want this to parse correctly, so as an example, if I go to live view right now, okay, this is not parsing correctly. This is acting kind of really strange here with my HTML5 tags here. So what has to happen here is that this is the parent tag. The parent tag, and we're not talking about PHP. If you do this inside of PHP, you don't have to do anything but the PHP extension. But if you want this to parse properly, so as an example, I'm going to publish this to a server. Okay, so let's, let's review this here. So we basically select what we want the content to be. We want to insert menu, insert server sign include, navigate your way to that file. And again, if you properly title your files, know which ones are part of your server side include. Now if we go and publish this to a browser, so I'm going to say file, I've already set up FTP. I have a whole video on setting up FTP. That's not what this tutorial is about. So I'm going to go to browser and I'm going to go to Firefox and I'm going to say testing server yes and dependent files yes. Well what dependent file am I talking about? In this particular case I'm talking about the branding HTML file which the server side include file is the child tag to this parent tag, which is index version 4 honors SSI. So I'm going to include a dependent file. Okay, so here's the page on the server, and you'll notice that there's a problem here. I can't see my server side include. So we're going to fix that in our next video, because again, I want to keep these videos short and sweet. I'm going to show you how to fix this issue with server-side include and understand why it's not showing up on my server. Even though I correctly did this and I correctly uploaded the branding HTML page. So we'll show you how to fix this in our next video.